Hi everybody, Gosha here. Just a second. Hi, we still have quite a few um, attendees joining, so sorry about that delay. We're still going to try and fit um, 30 minutes. Yep. Um, so welcome today. Thank you for joining me for one of our series of webinars at QJumpers. My name is Gosha Costa and I appreciate the opportunity to share my tips and tricks with you today regarding job load process within your QJumpers platform. Um, can everyone hear me okay? If there are any issues, can you please submit a comment in the chat of this meeting? There's quite a bit of feedback, I think. Um, maybe it's just me, but there seems to be quite a bit of feedback with you. I do actually hear that feedback as well. Just a second. All right, that should be better now. No? No, Susan is still saying she's getting feedback. What about now? Oh, we have a few comments. Okay. Actually, it stops here, Gossia. Yeah. Okay, uh, I do have my helper. We have a few people running this webinar. <laughs> it's a great technology uh, prompt. Okay, great. So let's start. So we're going to focus on the job load process here. We're getting quite a few questions in our support team regarding different elements of the um, job load process. So I just wanted to clarify here. There might be some attendees of this webinar today that don't have functionality to load jobs. So if you're just interested or would like to talk to your HR team, if you require this access, you need to access your, talk to your QJumpers system administrators. So on your QJumpers jobs dashboard, you have this big blue button to add new job. I'm going to go through the process today of advertising. So we're not focusing on job requisition process. Um, we are due to release a new functionality in a system that will um, add character accountants to different fields. Uh, so they will be visible on the screen in September, but I will mention today a few of those uh, restrictions. So let's start with adding an account a job title. Uh, okay, the job title, there are restrictions in the characters. Um, there can be only <laughs> 50 characters in the job title and a special characters like the forward slash are not permitted, okay? Next, we're moving on to selecting industry and occupation. And those, these two fields uh, raise a lot of questions for our users. Industries and occupations on this page are linked to our eQuest integration, which is, which is a global partner uh, that allows you to load jobs from your QJumpers platform to global pages, included Indeed and Monster in UK. The difficulty we hear our users are having is finding the right options. For industries, that's pretty easy because you should just um, select, start typing the industry your organization is within, like healthcare or you can education. Occupations uh, um, have some wording that is global wording. Sometimes it sounds like it's a little bit more Americanized. It's not critical that you get it 100% right, is it's not visible anywhere in your advertising on New Zealand job boards. 
if you select advertising via eQuest, then of course this occupation has to be related to the role you're recruiting for. So the easiest way is to start typing here, let's say health, and I have options that are related to health worker. Um, I had a few clients that were looking for office roles. So start typing office and you will get options here down that are related to office positions as well, like office clerk general, which are equivalents of the New Zealand admi office administrators often. Below you select hierarchy, uh, and of course, as an admin user, you will see all the hierarchies you've been, you have access to as a user, as a hiring manager, you will only see the options that you have access to. Questionnaires. If in your admin area there is at least one organizational questionnaire published, it is mandatory to select it as part of the process. Organizational questionnaires are commonly used as part of the application process, commonly known application form. You also have an option to create screening questionnaires, which are more job specific sets of questions that have been set up in your admin area. We have few clients uh, that use screening questionnaire as an option to select a set of questions as application form um, to utilize the flexibility that it is optional part of the job load process. Below you select the job location. And select type of work and job type. Start date, end date, and education level, as you can see, are no compulsory fields. What they are built in for is organizations that, um, let's say, recruit on a fixed term basis or contract, if they want to capture the start date of particular assignment that the person, the candidate, will be hired for, they can keep it here and um, enter it here as part of the advertising process for the on the internal purposes. It's not being published anywhere. And um, as I said, depends on your recruitment process. Start date, if you do use our onboarding and employment documents modules, can also default to the information that is um, an output element of the employment documents and can be revised later on. As I mentioned, follow the fields that are marked as compulsory, and if you don't need to, um, as part of your process, provide any additional details, you can just carry on. Order number and reference, of course, this is related to your accounting. If you require any identifiers for invoicing purposes internally, this should be added here. Application process. We have two application processes within QJumper system. Standard application process requires candidates to create a login or um, log into the existing account at the time of applying. If I go to this job on my other test site, candidates view adverts, they click apply now, and depending if your job is set as a quick application process or standard, they will be taken to login or registration page, or like in this case, they don't have to create logins, go straight to the application process and complete any questionnaires that you ask them to complete. That's what the quick application process is. When you load job, if you have these options enabled in your admin area, you can select the full particular role, a standard or quick application process as required or available for a candidate. At any stage, after you post the job live, you can still edit that setting. So if you set a job application process as standard, requiring candidates to create login, and you decide that later maybe the feedback is from your applicants, it's a little bit too hard, you can change it to quick application process when they don't have to log. Um, depending on your admin area, of course, you will have an option to make resume compulsory part of application process or make it um, optional. 
The next page is the advert details, and this is where you put the advert details that will show on the job boards. You can select particular brand you want for this advertising, and you can enter short description or full description. Short description will appear in the search results on the job boards and its content should encourage candidate to click through to the full advert copy um, where they will read the full advertisement and make a decision on applying. There is a limit of characters. Of characters, but shortly uh, in September, we will have those characters counters added to here. Um, the limit for the short description, I believe, 150, and the full description is 4,600. That includes spaces and characters, special characters. Often, if you um, provide all the details on this page and you get stuck, I guarantee it's that your position description is to long so please shorten it the limitation and character numbers for short description of course comes from the job boards like trade me and seek that we have to have um, alignment with when you load a vacancy and the advertising for new zealand job boards all the details about the advert should be included in the advertisement full description if you enter information in this box for skills required it will not show on the QJumpers job boards like Trade Me and Seek. The purpose of that field is that there are some overseas job boards to which you can post your vacancy via eQuest that allow candidates to search for a job they might be interested in using skills criteria. As I mentioned, for New Zealand job boards, um, it is not applicable, so um, you should put all the details of the job and skills required in full description. You can attach job description file and any supporting documents. Below we have advertising payment details. Some of our clients, some of you will have in your job load process additional tab called compensation and you only have it available if you have onboarding um, stage enabled in your system. So advertising payment details are required element of the job load process and they are linked to Trade Me and Seek job search criteria that job seekers can use when they search for a job. So for example, if you add 23 to 28, candidates going to Trade Me or Seek job board searching for job that pays minimum of $35 an hour this vacancy will not come up as an option for uh, what they're looking for for the search. That information currently is not published in a, on Trade Me and Seek. We currently have also in the development pipeline to release later in September a functionality to make the pay label, including remuneration and additional benefits visible in the advertising on Seek and Trade Me job boards. At this stage, as of today, if you want to make your salary or wage or any other pay benefits visible in your advertising on New Zealand job boards, you should include that information in a full job description or in a short description. The next stage is advertising. Here you select where you want to advertise this vacancy. And let's go from the top here first. So we have a calendar here with a job expiry date. This date, selected date, will default to 30 days from today. And that's because Trade Me and Seek, of course, allow advertising for 30 days that you pay for. When you set this expiry date here, that's the expiry date for your listing in the QJumper system. So if you currently are in a situation where you're not able to fill a role within 30 days, it is safer for you to select a further date, closing date, maybe even as, as far ahead if you want, as you want, to keep the applications list open. 
you can advertise internally and that means that job is not published anywhere on any public websites including your careers page and is only accessible via URL link I will show you how to retrieve from the system. You can advertise job internally only and later open it up to external advertising. You can't do it the other way around. If you select external advertising, by default, the job will be posted on the QJumpers job board, your careers page, and any other job boards you choose in the selection here. So let's just select, for example, Trade Me or Seek. If you select Trade Me or Seek, new tabs will come up here, and that's where we will finalize how we want this listed on those job boards. Next, as I mentioned, for organizations who have onboarding stage enabled, which is pre-hire bucket in the QJumpers applicant tracking system, there is a field that you can also comp uh, confirm compensation items. So what's the difference between this area and the one I just showed you, advertising payment details? Well, payment, advertising payment details, as I said, are related to the advertising on Trade Me and Seek and where this job is presented in the search results for candidates. The compensation items are the actual values of, tr of your wage or salaries um, that are part of your remuneration scheme at your organization. The detail and compensation um, tab is only internal. It's not published in the advertising and uh, will be confirmed in the onboarding stage of the candidate. So I actually go three and um, under compensation items, you are able to create in your admin area some other compensation elements. Here's an example I just added um, that this role will also be entitled the candidate to a company vehicle like Hilux. Click next. And here we go to those job boards advertising. The way Seek tab here is created, it pulls information automatically from the Seek based on what you have set up for this job on basic details. So we created this job on the basic details as a full-time permanent role. Here, Seek have slightly different options. So you select if it's full-time, part-time, casual, or contract role. You can change it if you want a different setting. The location here, the field, as I said, it feel, fits automatically from Seek based on the Rotorua location we selected on the basic details tab. If I want this job to actually be uh, listed somewhere else, I can type here the name and Seek will show me the other selections. So there will be quite a few of Australian locations as of course um, the setting for Seek is based in Australia, but you will be sure to find the New Zealand equivalent as well. Below you have a category how you want this uh, job listed on QJumpers and initially it defaults to what Seek suggests for this role, but you can also make your own selection by uh, using the choose a different category option and choose your own categories. Based on the advertising contract you have with Seek, you will be able to select classic standout um, or premium advert. Premium adverts can only be selected on the day you post the advertising to Seek. If you select standout, feel free to select a, a suitable logo for this advert, make sure you click next if your Seek account has many more options set up and enter bullet points. There is a limit, um, character limits in these as well. You can enter URL link uh, for the video you would like to add to your advertising. Both Trade Me and Seek support only YouTube public links so if you're trying to put uh, Vimeo or anything else it will not be accepted. Click next. A similar process we go through on Trade Me so you select the Trade Me options for work type and contract type, select the industry they offer 
and the location you wish this job to be listed under. Depending on your job pack, you will have an option to add bullet points as well as the branding. Okay. I'm told to hurry up. Oh, not completed something here. Okay. And the review page, of course, you can click on each tab, make any changes you want, and push the advertising for this role. Now, I've been told to hurry up, but I want to clarify a few more things. Once the job is live, we selected the closing date for November, for I think 30th of September. Trade me and seek listings will drop off after 30 days, or you can also use a button here to withdraw advertising from Trade Me and Seek. It's not showing on my test site, unfortunately, because I haven't posted them. Um, to withdraw at any time. Be mindful that if you withdraw QJumpers listing, it shuts down all other advertising options. When you post advertising and you view, see that red icon, a red dot, click into this, and the little triangle that shows there will show you why the job failed to trade me. It could be insufficient balance like here. It could be um, exceeded job title characters, or it could be something else that the error message will show. If you need to copy a job, um, you can copy live or expired job by using the copy option. And as I mentioned, for internal only vacancies, we can you can use the copy URL link to share um, this job vacancy somewhere else. Okay. Uh, in the in case when you when Trade Me and Seek advertising has expired, but you want to extend the listing on those job boards and you have your QJumpers listing still open, please contact support at QJumpers. Dot com and Kate will help you to duplicate the listings on Trade Me or Seek or relist the position, which will feed applicants to the same applicants list in your QJumpers system. I hope you had a chance to submit some questions in the chat. Please do so if I have missed anything else and we will follow up with the answers. Uh, because of the time constraint, I wanted to hand over now to Annette Wetherall. Annette um, is our HR manager and also consultant, main consultant for H QJumpers HR Assist, which provides um, outsourced HR and recruitment services at QJumpers if you ever need that extra help. Uh, whatever Annie is doing is still connected to the QJumpers system as she's part of our team. And today she will tell you a few tips and tricks on how to write an engaging job advertisement to improve uh, the response and engagement from the job seekers in the current market. Thank you. Annie, over to you, please. Hi, everyone. Hope you're having a lovely Wednesday. Hey, look, just obviously wanted to have a chat to you today in a, in a candidate short market at the moment. Just really wanted to cover off a couple of, of tips on how to write an effective advert. I have been told I've got to keep it short because when it comes to recruitment and HR, I could talk forever. And I've got Andrea in my ear here who's uh, going to be cracking the whip to make sure I don't, don't start to talk forever. So how to write an effective advert. I guess a couple of things here. I want to give away a couple of free reference checks today from our department to you. So in the chat, I want you to pop how long do people take to read an advert on average? So what's, what's your best guess there with how long a candidate will take on average to read an advert? So if you pop that in the chat and then the, the one that's closest, I'm going to give you a, a free reference check on that. But here's the answer. It is roughly around 49.7 seconds. When you add video onto that, that takes it to around two or three minutes, which is why it's so important to have, have um, you know, video if you can. Oh, here. 
not moving on here. Sorry, try. There, oh, there we go. All right, so the next one where I want to um, give away a free reference check is if you can tell me what shape letter the candidates read an advert in. So when a candidate goes to read your advert, they actually read it in the shape of a letter. So if you pop that in the chat, then the one that gets that exactly right, then, or the first one, I should say, that gets that exactly right, I'm going to give you a free reference check for that as well. And here's the answer. This is a heat map. Which, you can see this one, you can see this now. No, it doesn't want to move on. Got my technical person, no. I'll tell you the answer. The, uh, oh, there we go, she's got it. It's in the shape of an F. So, oh. sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, let's try that again. There we go. There we go. All right, so as you can see, or I guess hopefully you can see, if you look at the heat map, there is the yellow, and it, it does look a little bit like an F there. There. Okay, how to write a good advert. Now, this is an actual advert that I found. This is for a fruit delivery driver. As you can see, part-time, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 5 a.m., start, finish, you know, by lunchtime, be part of our friendly, relaxed team, etc. Um, and hey, in the end, sorry to interrupt, but I don't think we can see the share screen. Sorry. Oh, okay. oh. Hang on two seconds. Can you see that now? No. No. Sorry, guys. And thank you for interrupting. That's <laughs> that's perfect. Right. Awesome, thank you. Wonderful. Now I just need to go back one to so you can see that. Yep, there you go. So as you can see down the bottom, it says, um, yeah, it was sort of semi retired person. And then literally it just says email. So I guess if we look at that, you know, there's several things that are wrong with that ad. It has discrimination in it. There was spelling and grammar mistakes. There was, um, you know, I think Tuesday, Wednesday didn't have capitals, which doesn't reflect well on the company, you know, or the brand. Um, it didn't really tell the applicant what they were doing. There was no branding on it. And it just said email. So where do you apply? Obviously, if you, if you write an ad like that, what it does, it's, it's going to cost the company money. It's going to waste company money. And not only that, but it really increases the stress on your employees and on you as a manager, um, because the advert is just not going to attract the right person. So a good advert does require time and thought. And, you know, I guess what we need in there is you need, you need to represent the company well. Okay, so you do need to put that time and thought in there. Put a video in there, if possible. Think about who you're trying to attract. Are you offering the right things to attract the person that you want? You know, have a think about what different industries, you know, are looking for. So we're looking at drivers of attraction. So, um, you know, for some roles, remuneration might be more important. For some, it's career development. For others, it's work-life balance, etc. So we really need to be thinking about that, that side of things before we start the ad. So what do we need to include in an ad? First of all, we need a clear, searchable title. Um, and I know this is, this is a little bit of a hot topic from time to time. Sometimes, you know, the train of thought is, hey, look, let's really make it exciting. Others, uh, no, call it what it is. You know, for search purposes, these are a couple of titles that I have previously found. One's a beverage dissemination officer, which was a bartender, and the other one was a chief chatter, which was a, a call centre manager. The, you know, bearing in mind, you can change it, um, you know, when you're actually doing your interviews, you can talk about that kind of thing, but, but call it what it is. You know, specific information about your company, your team, your product, your workplace, anything to, to excite your candidate. Clear information about the role, responsibilities and background of the candidate. And this is really important in today's market. It's the additional benefits. 
And it doesn't need to be anything major. Often when I talk to clients, they will say, oh, but we don't offer that much. And when we drill down into it, they actually do. So it might be that you're highlighting great salary, you know, flexible hours. Maybe they've got the ability to work a couple of days from home. Maybe they've got a little bit of flexibility to pop off to an appointment if need be. Um, you know, maybe you want to put in there at the moment that the company's been in business for years because that promotes job security. It could be things like free parking, medical insurance. It could be a paid day off on your birthday. The, the list is endless. And I think when you unpack those things, um, you know, we actually offer more than what we, what we think. Um, but super important because at the moment, candidates are all about the what's in it for me at the moment. So top tips to, to follow. The first two paragraphs are crucial to grab attention. Format is really important. Use your bullet points. So follow that F shape. Use your bullet points. You know, use paragraph breaks. Highlight the benefits and the unique selling points, the what's in it for me. Extremely important in today's market. Um, the other thing too is don't make your candidate or you know how sometimes you write in your ad, our successful candidate will have don't make that longer than what you're offering, okay? Because what that, what that portrays to the candidate is, gosh, they're expecting all of this from me, but they're going to give me nothing in return. So it's just a perception thing. Um, don't use jargon, you know, or industry acronyms unless you're trying to attract um, a candidate that will understand those. Um, recently, I saw one that had um, NPLA. Now, the MPLA was not actually uh, crucial to the role. It was something you could go and get later, but a little bit off-putting because people, you know, it said, you know, it must be willing to get MPLA. You know, what is an MPLA kind of thing? Um, use the right language for the target audience, you know, and make sure that your ad is free from, from spelling and grammar mistakes. And there is, it's interesting, there's a lot, lot of spelling and grammar uh, mistakes that pop up. So I guess to highlight, as I said, check out those first two paragraphs. You might even want to, um, to I guess, shift things around. You know, you might want to put your, what we offer more to the top of the ad. You know, think about putting it a little higher up. Review what you're offering, what you're wanting from your candidate. Check out those, you know, those acts jargon and make sure that, um, you're not just popping it in because that's what you call it. Um, you know, and make sure, as I said, from that you are, you know, you're double checking your work before you put it out to the public because that's a, rep a representation of your company and your brand. And my shameless pitch at the end, uh, what we do obviously is we assist companies that if you're really busy, um, we can be your extra set of recruitment or HR hands. So whether that's just reference checking or doing the entire reference check so the entire recruitment process, um, Ministry of Justice checks, anything like that, we can help. So if you do find that you need a hand, you're flat out, you need a hand with those reference checks, you need a hand with recruiting at all, there's my number and, uh, and my email and we would love to help you. And we will check the chat shortly for those answers and I'll be in contact with regard to the reference checks. And if, sorry, Annette, before you yep. finish, um, we've just got a question that came through in the chat that we're mm -hmm. hoping you can help with. What kind of things do you put into bullet points? Uh, bullet points are anything that um, to attract the candidates. So you might put uh, great culture, you might put work, you know, work-life balance, um, anything that's going to really help your job to stand out from, from lots of others. So have a think about um, potentially what's unique to your role or your company. Um, it might be that you offer an extensive, extensive range of benefits um, more than other companies do and you want to include that. You want to get it noticed. It's the things that you really want to get out there and get noticed. So I hope that helps. I'll just... That's it. Course. Yeah, and thank you very much Thanks, for guys. joining us. Sorry about our technical difficulties. <laughs> and um, yeah, contact um, Annette. I'm going to be in charge about HR Assist or any other questions, you can email them through to me and we'll send out some notes and a, a video recording so we can pass colleagues.
Okay, thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.